Hi, this is Debbie. I have a tutorial over Altenew of how to create this colourful jellyfish floating in a royal blue sea and I'm going to share it here on my YouTube channel and blog as well. I'm going to be using the painted jellyfish set but before I start stamping anything, be it a jellyfish or a flower, I often do a quick Google search for photographs so I can work out a realistic colourway. I was really struck by the orange jellyfish with red detailing in a rich blue sea. I've got a piece of Nina Solar White card in a mini misty and I'm placing the first layer of the jellyfish down, picking it up onto the door of the misty, making sure that my piece of card is tucked well into the corner and therefore if I do want to stamp this twice, which I often do, that the card stays in place. I can keep tucking it into that corner. I've got the new Warm and Cozy Mini Ink Cube set and I'm going to be using the lightest two colours from the set. For the first layer I'm starting with the sun-kissed ink and giving the stamp a good coating before pressing firmly onto the card. Being a solid image, the first impression is often not perfect, which is why I like to use a stamp positioner and stamp the image a second time. Also, being dye inks, the impression is slightly darker than it will be once it's dry, and as it dries, the ink sinks into the card to give a smooth and even impression. I think it's always worthwhile to let the first stamp layer dry before moving on to the second layer. I'm impatient, so I often speed the process up with a heat tool. I've lined up the next layer of the jellyfish over the first layer, using the rounded dome of the jellyfish as the reference point and I'm going to stamp this layer in orange cream ink. Again I'm going to stamp this orange cream layer a second time to ensure a good impression and already after just two layers I'm loving the look of the jellyfish and the variation in colour, particularly of the fronds. There is a third layer to the jellyfish in this stamp set, however I'm not going to stamp that now. Instead I'm using the outline image and lining that up and then I'm going to stamp it in crimson ink to give the red detailing I'd seen in the pictures of the jellyfish. I've been using my heat tool to dry the stamped image before moving on to the next layer. This is particularly important now as I want to heat emboss the final layer of the jellyfish and I don't want any embossing powder to stick where I don't want it to on the areas of the jellyfish which are still damp. So I've dried the image thoroughly and then to check if there's still some residual moisture left I'm preparing the card as if I was going to heat emboss by adding some EK Success powder tool and this powder helps prevent stray embossing powder sticking where you don't want it to. And then as I sprinkle on the powder and tap it off, you can see, see that I'm still getting some of the powder sticking and therefore I'm going to need to dry the piece a little longer. Having dried the card a second time, I've prepared it for heat embossing as before. And this time when I gave the card a really good tap, there was a minimal amount of embossing powder remaining. I've placed the card back in the mini misty and treated it with powder to it again before lining up the final layer of the jellyfish, which I'm stamping in clear embossing ink. I'm sprinkling on antique gold embossing powder and then giving it a really good tap off to remove any excess before melting the embossing powder with the heat tool. I love how this final layer of heat embossing gives depth and shine to the jellyfish as if sunlight is shining through the water and making it glisten. There is a matching die for both the large and the small jellyfish in the set and I'm lining up the die keeping the fronds in the bottom right corner visible through the die as a reference point and then I'm going to attach washi to keep it in place before running it through the die cutting machine. With jellyfish now complete, I'm moving on to creating a deep blue sea for him to float in. I'm starting with a piece of Nina Solar White card and then blending in inks with a Ranger Mini Blender to create a gradient of colour from a deep blue sea to the sparkling water near the surface. I'm starting out with Caribbean Sky ink and blending it gently over a large area of the card. Eventually I'm going to be die cutting a circle from the ink blended piece and I want to make sure I cover a large enough area. I've now moved on to using a sapphire ink, which is a much deeper blue, and blending this in gently into the Caribbean sky. As this is a much darker colour, you really don't need much ink on the blending tool, and also using a light hand helps to give an even blend. To finish, I like to go back over the transition area with a lighter coloured ink to blend them together nicely. Having said that, I really like to add splatters of paint and perfect pearl solution to backgrounds, and splatters cover up a multitude of sins. So if your ink blending isn't perfect, then I'd suggest that you just add a good dose of splatter. I keep a solution of Perfect Pearls in a range of mini mister. To make it up, I add a good scoop of Perfect Pearls and then top it up with water and give it a really good shake. And then you take the tube from inside the mini mister and use that to splatter the sparkly mixture onto your card. If I turn the card, I hope you can see how the Perfect Pearls really catches the light and sparkles. I'm going to die cut a circle from the ink blended piece and then the only thing left to sort out is the sentiment for this card. I really like the phrase, go with the flow. Now this is a companion sentiment which is supposed to say, with the rest of the words from the set, it's supposed to say, relax and go with the flow. However, I only want the, the go with the flow part, and so I'm going to cut the, the sentiment with my scissors, 
and if I ever want to stamp it again as complete sentiment, I can always mount them together on an acrylic block. I have a piece of black card in the Mini Misty and I'm going to prepare the card with EK Success Powder Tool and then stamp the sentiment in clear embossing ink before sprinkling on white embossing powder. Having tapped off any excess embossing powder, I can then melt the powder with a heat tool. And then once the powder is melted and cooled, I can trim down the card into a skinny banner around the sentiment. I've cut, scored and folded a deep blue A2 card base and then I've added foam adhesive to the back of a white panel just slightly smaller than the card base. I've also added foam adhesive to the back of the ink blended circle, the jellyfish and the sentiment strip and it's just a case of removing the backers of the foam adhesive and adhering each piece in place. I wanted to keep this card nice and clean and simple with lots of white space but I did think a few sequins would add a nice touch. I adhered these with Ranger Multimedium in matte. And that completes this card with multi-layered and heat embossed jellyfish floating in a deep blue sparkly sea. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today, as well as the link to the coordinating blog post over at lamedoodledesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.